Hamilton and I'm with Coder Dojo. Okay, and what are you doing at the Diplomat Summit? Um, so I'm here today doing a mixture of things, of meeting people who are interested in starting a Coder Dojo in their office or in their company, um, people who want to join a Coder Dojo, um, and just generally networking and seeing if more companies want to get Coder Dojos in them. Um, so a few of the companies here um, run Coder Dojos in their, their offices, and we've got Coder Dojos in the likes of uh, Twitter's office out in San Francisco, GitHub, uh, Google. So it's, we're starting to see this like really cool trend of offices having, or companies having Coder Dojos in their offices. Okay, and, and by the, the time this is finished, is there anything in particular you hope to have achieved from it? Is it just meeting more people, or is there something more to it than that? Um, I want somebody to like give me an idea which completely blows my mind and will potentially transform um, transform something in Coderojo. Someone with an outside perspective who may have never seen it before, but comes up with a really great, innovative idea. Okay, yeah. And I mean, you, it's obviously been a huge hit. It's in you know twenty something <laughs> countries. I think I counted one hundred twenty seven different dojos on the website. There's yeah. probably more. Um, what, where next from it? Is it just a case of getting more and more people on board? Yeah. Um, so I think you know it's, it's a mixture of, of growing and, and scaling, but also we have to put some um, some more structure in place and really take a look at the organisation. Um, we had our Coder Ojo conference on Saturday, and we had about 150 mentors from around the world come, and we, we talked quite a lot about the core of it, the philosophy, and how it scales, and um, just the nature of things like how assessment works. We've got badges and belts and so on. Um, so it's a mixture now. The next few months will be scaling and uh, also um, <coughs> working on the, the organization side of it. Okay, okay. You, you also have a few other titles besides your work called Dojo that you're a hacker in residence uh, at uh, is it, uh, Resolute Venture Capital. What does that mean and, and what do you do as part of that? Um, so working with uh, Mike Kirschland at Resolute, it's uh, essentially when uh, Mike or one of the guys in there is thinking about looking at a new company, um, essentially just giving like a technical perspective on it, whether the technology that they're using is it strikingly new or um, particularly, uh, particularly impressive or whether the idea has been done or it's been copied. Um, and then just kind of vetting as well, talking about what type of type of stack they're using, or um, just talking about the more technical technical things to, to make sure there's no scams. <laughs> or, okay, okay. And it, just to, to go back maybe then to, to Coder Dojo, obviously it's maybe part of the solution in terms of skill short and so on. I, I, how confident are you that this is all going to help the kids that are doing this down the line maybe get jobs with some of the companies that are displaying here? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident. Um, even if the, the, the kids, I mean, the, the obvious thing is that, you know, we're a country that's approaching almost 14% unemployment and yet we've got these thousands of vacancies in tech technology so I mean the kids that really like it and particularly the ones that are now doing code rages and the kind of offices of Microsoft or so on are getting used to that environment they like it they go on they kind of fill that and you know that's that's one solution to the unemployment but even the kids who don't go into software engineering as a profession that maybe become like going to economics or going to politics or law or, or you know medicine um, the ability to, to program and create stuff and particularly with that with that you know that very uh, with, with that knowledge um, like I mean if you could could you imagine like a doctor that could could program um, and if the doctor came up with an idea some some way of some new technical innovation that will Im improve healthcare and he could actually go ahead and implement it um, instead of being completely like potentially uh, clueless about the technology behind it or whether it's feasible um, I think just this a generation of people who have coding ability could be a massive massive thing for for society.